This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. Welcome. And by the image on the screen, you could see that we're going to be talking about how most people have been investing in comics wrong all of this time. Now, this is going to be especially beneficial to the newer collector because with age comes wisdom and with experience you can sometimes learn how to improve your life by learning what not to do by learning from your mistakes so you first have to be a little humble and realize that you have mistakes that you've made and if you can acknowledge that you have the ability to to improve things Denial never works in your favor, so keep that in mind. So this video is not going to be for everybody, and of course not everybody is investing wrong. There are always exceptions to every single rule, so this may not apply to you. But because I'm a person that has the spectator mentality at times, where I like to sit back and just watch how the world operates, you'd be surprised at how much information you can get when you're gathering information on what you see hear read not what you're told and I always tell people to do your own research especially when it comes to something that you want to collect now not everybody invests in comics but there are some in the community that are more investors than they believe and I'll give you a quick example if you are a person that owns more than one of the same comic you are an investor if you are a person that's grading your comics to sell them at a higher profit you are an investor and these this is not anything to be ashamed of or bad about I'm just making points if you are a person who grades your comic claiming just to preserve them and you are disappointed that your 9.8 came back a 9.6 you are an investor now again if somebody cannot see their own faults or own ways then they only hurt themselves and then they hurt the industry as a whole so first of all there's nothing wrong with investing I mean we all invest something in our life we invest our time we have invest our emotion we go to work so we can be able to buy the things that we need and sometimes even the things that we love which are comics because nobody needs a comic you could survive without them this is what they call a first world problem where where to spend your extra income so if you're gonna spend you wanna do it wisely and industry all major companies profit from the fact that most people do not research the things that they purchase and most people instead of thinking and processing and checking around they will be impulse buyers in other words they will use their emotion before they use their logic and businesses know how to take advantage of those people and that's why one of the first things I highly recommend is to get rid of brand loyalty only be loyal to a brand who is loyal to you and is providing you the product or the service that you feel is to the best of what they could offer otherwise you will always settle for mediocrity and that saves them a lot of money and it takes advantage of a lot of people and if you know anything about investing and I've learned this over my years in comic collecting and I also learned the hard way from investing in things originally like gold and silver now I'm in it for the long game so with my comics and my gold and silver it doesn't matter when there's peaks and valleys because for every peak there's gonna be a valley and also with every valley there's gonna be a peak now what does that mean there are gonna be times where something that you're investing in is worth a lot of money sometimes it just drops off the face of the earth and all of a sudden something that was worth a thousand dollars is now you're lucky to sell for ten but that ten dollar investment could one day turn around and go back to a thousand dollars so it really is based on where you make your purchase 
Because if you purchased something at a thousand dollar mark and it drops off the face of the earth, well, that's the wrong time to sell it. Most people sell because they panic. I mean, look at stock market crashes. Most people have no problem investing as something is going up, but they panic when something sells. And why do you think wealthy people stay wealthy? Because they're the ones selling while it's rising. And they're the ones buying while it's falling. And you notice, and I'm just going to stick with the comic books, when do most people buy a book? They don't buy it when it's the cheapest or when nobody's talking about it, which is the best time to be investing in something. And what inspired me is the video I made earlier today. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And I recommended a comic, and actually a series of comics, that you could probably find in the dollar bin. Now, if you're an investor, and again, like I said, there are more investors than even people will admit. And I gave a few examples of how you're an investor. You don't have to be 100% an investor to be one. It's, there's no shame in it. But that book that I mentioned, nobody's talking about. There are no movie deals. There are no TV talks. There are rumors that I've heard of. But there's no mainstream rumors, which means it may or may not come true someday, or it may come true years from now. So the first thing I got to say is, if you want to be an investor of anything, the first thing you have to have is patience. You may sometimes have to sit on your investments for years if you invest in the wrong thing or at the wrong time. Because like, for example, New Mutants... 98. That book, when it came out, and people of my age, I'm 47, so people around my age who were able to buy that the day it came out on the shelf will be able to acknowledge the fact that for years and even decades, that book was worth nothing. Same thing with Amazing Spider-Man 300. Ten years ago, you could have bought a 9.8 version of that copy for probably under $100 easily. And raw, you probably wouldn't have been able to pick it up for 10 to 25 And I've used this example before, but just in case if you're new to my channel or missed that particular video, I bought two copies of Amazing Spider-Man 300 the day they came out. Back in 92 or 93, I don't remember the exact year, I went to New York Comic Con, Todd McFarlane was there, and I had him sign Amazing Spider-Man 298, and Amazing Spider-Man 300, which I still own. It actually was graded. I sent it into CBCS. It came back a 9.0. Still have the book. Now, about 10 years ago, while I was doing some yard sales to get rid of some of my stuff and make a little extra money, that was one of the books that I placed on one of my yard sale tables. Not in a box. It was out on the table, flat out, clear as the light of day. I was selling it for $25. Now, this is a signed Todd McFarlane high-grade book. 9.0 may not seem like a high grade, but that's still near mint. It's near mint minus, but still near mint. I mean, the difference between a 9.0 and a 9.8 is not that dramatic. But you'd never know that with some people that talk about graded comics. The reason I still have it to this day is 10 years ago, nobody cared about that book. Now, how many of you would gladly buy dozens of that issue for that price now, a signed Amazing Spider-Man 300? But I still have it because most people didn't want it. And I am so happy that is the case because look at that price of that comic now. If I wanted to, I could easily sell that book for over $500. Notice I haven't done that. And if anybody is interested, I'll be more than happy to show it. I've shown it in several videos. Despite what very few claim, I have 99% of every single comic I've ever collected since I was a child. A huge chunk of them got stolen my major books I've talked about that frequently and I've sold about 15 comics to maybe 20 comics in 30 some odd years
but again, let's get back into the investing because there's a whole thing about why I talk about this. And this is why I appreciate those that listen to the entire video because you will get some information throughout my rambles. I don't make short videos. When do most people buy a comic? Just think about it. I've made how many videos showing books that obviously you could see I clearly already own that people all of a sudden want that they didn't want the day before because a movie was pointed out or a TV show. And everybody buys it. And what do they be spend? A heck of a lot more money the day of than they could have the day before. But the day before, nobody was looking for it. Why? Because no one else wanted it. And the problem with using emotion and just reacting instead of thinking is you will only want something when everybody else wants it. I mean, prime example. How many people back in 2015 or even 2014 when they announced it were looking for the first appearance of Ultron? And the first appearance later of Apocalypse because they were announced in movies. How much do you think they're worth now? And that's when I first got back into collecting comics, so I made that mistake. I spent, I think, $500 on the first appearance of Ultron, graded at, I believe, either an 8.0 or a 9.0. It's somewhere in my boxes I can check. That book is worth maybe 200 now learned my lesson but again because I collect comics because I love them who knows if Ultron doesn't come back with a reboot or all of a sudden the character surges and it's worth more again but I don't buy my comics to sell them although I love saying how I spend less money than most at that moment now, obviously, if I didn't buy something the day it came out or I didn't buy it years ago, I didn't get the best deal ever. But I'm comparing it with the time that people are buying the book. You have to invest patience. If you cannot be patient and pass by literally dozens upon dozens of the book that you want, then you, my friend, are allowing emotion to take over your logic which goes against every principle about investing. Because investing is all about buying low and selling high. And you can see in this comic book community, most people react to buying a book when nobody, well, when everybody is talking about it. And you're paying three, four, ten times more for the book. So there is a price to pay. Now, the book I mentioned earlier today, and again, if you haven't seen it, watch it. That book may never turn out to be a movie or a TV show. It could end up being fake news. Or maybe they changed their mind or they didn't have time. Or maybe people at that point got so sick of comic book movies, they just canceled everything. Well, if you spent a dollar on that book, what did you really lose? But if you spent, for example, like I said, the first appearance of Ultron, and obviously I'm not the only one, although I don't, I don't have a problem with admitting my mistakes because that's how you learn from them. Again, acknowledging your mistakes is the way to improve them. Denial is not your best friend, even if it makes you save face amongst your colleagues. And that's what most people worried about. They're worried about other people's opinions. And trust me, I was there at one point. I worried too much about other people's opinions instead of valuing my own and trusting my instincts. And when it comes to investing, it becomes a herd mentality. I mean, look at dollar stocks. How many people are investing in dollar stocks? Not many. But I guarantee you, if one of those dollar stocks was all of a sudden on the news and said that dollar stock is now worth $100, everybody's going to climb on board. Look at something like Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was a dollar for a whole Bitcoin and 65 cents for a whole Bitcoin, nobody invested in it. When it got up to 40, 50, 60, all of a sudden people started investing. When it went from 60 down to 20, most people sold and got out. And then it kept going. Now, Bitcoin, for example, went as high as about $20,000 per Bitcoin. 
It's now roughly around 6,000. How many th people do you think who bought at 20,000 are a little disappointed? But the worst thing to do is sell because what happens if five years from now, 10 years from now, that coin is worth 100,000? You got to play the long game. And if you are some of those people that turn around and sell something for a quick profit, you, you may not make the most money that you think. I mean, I'll give you a prime example. Edge of Spider-Verse number two. I got back in the comic collecting around November of 2014. So I didn't know about Edge of Spider-Verse uh, 2 at that point. I didn't learn about it until around December and January of 2015. So about late December of 14, early January of, uh, of 2015. At that point, those comics were about 18 to $30 a piece. Now, if you bought it for cover, and let's say the cover was two ninety nine, let's just assume that's what it was. So let's assume three dollars. I don't remember because I didn't buy it the day it came out. So if you sold at three dollars, I'm sorry, you bought at three dollars, and you sold it at thirty, you'd think, "Wow, I made a great profit. I made ten times my investment." But you only made twenty seven dollars profit. So if you go by percentage. Yeah, you had a high percentage, but you didn't make a lot of money. Me buying about, I think roughly about 10 to 12 copies, which I have every single one, except for one. I had a 9.6 that I sold because I had a bunch of them that I had graded, and they came back 9.8s. So I had a 9.6. I needed a little money, so I sold that one. But all the others, I still have about six or seven that are to be graded that I still have now a 9.8 of that book is worth 200 to 300 so I spent on average $25 for those books because I bought maybe three or four of them at 32 and $30 but the majority of them I spent between 20 and 25 so let's say the average is about $25 I spent for them now you have to, if you're going to get them graded, it's going to cost you, especially with CGC for example, roughly about another $25 to $30 because you have to factor in the insurance, the packaging, all the fees. You have to include, include that in the cost. You can't say you bought a book at $25 and then go get it graded and say you spent $25 on it because then you're not a smart business person. You have to say now that $25 book is now you've invested about 55 to $60 into that book. Well, that $60 investment, if it comes back at 9.8, for example, is now valued at about 200 to $250. And depending on where they go with that, cam that character, it may continue to rise. So look at the profit margin I've made if I sell the books. The person originally sold them went from $3 to 30 I, as of this moment, if I chose to sell them, which I won't, went from about, let's say the raw ones, 30 to now 100 to about 150 for a raw copy. And some people are spending that amount. Another example, the 1 in 25 variant. I bought for $96, between $93 and $96, because I always include shipping and handling because, again, that is part of the cost. If you bought a book for 90 and paid $5 in shipping, you paid $95 for the book. You cannot say you want it for 90 because you have to factor in that it cost you another $5 to have that book delivered to you. So the ultimate cost would be 95 So let's just narrow it down to 95 because it's either 93 or 96 I don't know offhand. I, got, I sent that book to CGC. Now, it cost about $18 to have it graded. It cost about $15 to have the book shipped. Another 5 to $10 for insurance. And then the return shipping. So, because I send in, and especially at that time, about 20 books you have to... The more books you send, the more you can have the average. So, I probably spent a total of $25 extra. So let's say I spent in a total investment of around $120 for that 1 in 25 variant of Edge of Spider-Verse number 2, the Greg Land variant, which I think is absolutely a beautiful book. I got it, it came back at 9.8. That book right now is selling on eBay 
for between $1,500 and $2,000. Again, I'm not selling it. And I could lose out one day. All of a sudden, everybody could hate that character and it drops down to $50. I'm not in it for the investment. But many people are. I mean, you all you have to do is look at eBay. You know, for all the books I buy, that means somebody's selling them. For some reason, there are a few people in this community that make it seem toxic if you're an investor. Many of them are. Like I said, if you own more than one of the same comic, well, you're an investor. Because if you're just reading a comic because you love it, then why would you need to buy another copy? I'll give you an example. How many of you have gone to school and had to read from a textbook? Let's say you go to college, because in college you have to buy the textbooks. How many of you buy multiple copies of a textbook? Let's say you're going to um, astronomy class, and they say, okay, you have to buy, you have to go to the school store and buy Astronomy for Dummies Series 1. That's, your, that's what you have to pay. And let's say the book is around $50. Because schools love to take advantage of college students by dramatically overcharging. And that's not even for a new book. How many of you will say, you know what, let me buy two of them. Because I love the read so much. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? So if you have, let's say, Amazing Spider-Man 300, and you buy a second copy, well, you can no longer say you bought it because you love to read them. Because it's rather silly to buy two of the same thing. If it's for the love of reading them. Do you think the second copy will have a better story? But most people don't want to admit that. Because they have to maintain their image. Because they're worried about what other people think. It's group thought. Group mentality. And especially if you're new. You want to get away from group mentality. Or following the herd. Because if you know anything about herds. It's very easy to lead them places. Especially to slaughter. They will eagerly stand in line and follow the herd in their direction. Don't be those people. So, also, when it comes to investing, there are risks involved. As they say, it takes money to make money. Sometimes you are going to lose. That's why I don't invest my money in, for example, betting. Or gambling because it's a rigged game if you think you're betting on a sporting event and it's going to go 100% the way it's supposed to you're you and your money are going to be soon parted and you see it all the time with referees anybody that can be influenced whether through threats or through bribery can change the outcome of a game to me that is not a wise investment unless you have inside information but then you're just being dishonest and that's not the best way to have a healthy, successful life. And I don't mean successful just by financially. I'm talking about inner success as well, having integrity. Like, for example, when I got that graded book that was, in my opinion, and f several other people's opinion, overgraded. I could have easily turned around and sold it for a profit. But that's the wrong thing to do. It could have made me a heck of a lot of money, and it now would have been somebody else's burden, but as they say, do unto others as you, as you would have done to you. Would you want to have a book and find out, well, it looks like a 3.0, maybe a 4.0, but it says 6.5. I feel cheated. I don't like that person. That sends out a negative energy. That's not the way to live life. And there's an old m moral saying that says, and I follow this, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So you may be sneaky with changing and altering things about a book, for example, and get away with it. doesn't make it right. So, you know, some people that point fingers sometimes need to point them at themselves. And I'm not saying anybody specifically. Know thyself. So, again, with investing in anything, you have to have patience. You have to get rid of brand loyalty. Yes, I collect more Marvel than DC. It's just a personal preference. But I will never say no to a good DC book if I find it interesting. Or an image book, or a Dark Horse book, or an Aftershock book, or from a company I've never heard of. Just look at the video I made just the other day. My must-have comics. Plenty of them were from companies I've never even heard of. For every success that you have in investing... 
you will probably have 90% failure. Don't beat yourself up and, and don't invest money you do not have. If you are investing your rent money or money for food to be able to buy something and take the chance on, well, you're putting a lot at risk. And that will create an emotion to where, oh, I have to make money and you'll be very mad. And that's why when people ask me when to buy a comic, I'll be more than happy to tell them. But when it comes to people asking me when is a good time to sell, I will never tell them. And it's not because I'm trying to hold back or keep them from information. It's because you should sell your comic if you're going to sell them when you feel it's the best time, not when somebody else tells you. Take responsibility for your choices. It never hurts to ask questions. But the reason I won't tell anybody when is the best time to sell is because, let's say, for example, I tell people right now is the best time to sell a book. And they sell it for a hundred dollars. Let's say they spent fifty on it and they're happy they made a fifty dollar profit. Well then all of a sudden, five years from now, that book is a one thousand dollar book. Do you think they're gonna be happy with my choice of information? People need to research things themselves. And sometimes it does help to ask questions, but don't base your decisions on peer pressure on the herd mentality on other people telling you this is the way to be because that's an elitist point of view if anybody is out there telling you well you have to collect this way or you have to invest in this way or there's something wrong with you that is a person you don't want to take advice from now it's your choice to be friendly or take advice from people who are going to point their finger and say no you shouldn't do that that's an elitist point of view that's not very open-minded. My recommendation would go to people who offer advice, not dictatorship tactics. And those people may be more popular because most people are very timid. They get intimidated by people very easily. I'm not one of those people. So you have to have thick skin as well if you're going to invest. Now, again, if you're collecting comics because you love to read them, then this doesn't apply to you. But that should mean you only have one copy of every book. That should mean if you get a book graded, you don't care what the grade is. You ever notice when you watch my live videos, when I do the unboxings, I have a lot of low-grade comics. I even have comics that have no cover. I have Amazing Spider-Man number one which is coverless, has a facsimile cover. I have Fantastic Four, issue number one, that has a facsimile cover. I have Superman, issue number two, coverless. And yet, I still love them like they were any other comic. Now, how many people in this quote-unquote community, and I've heard it many times, said, oh, I would never collect that. Well, then, you cannot tell me that you love collecting for reading, because last time I checked, there's no story on the cover. It's the inside that matters. And I all you have to do is look at the videos that I had unboxings. Look under the Holy Grail unboxings. You'll see them. And read the comments. There are many people say, oh, I'd never buy that. Well, then you're an investor. Because why wouldn't you buy want to buy a cheaper version of the comic just because it doesn't have a cover? Because if you're doing it for the love of reading, the reading part is on the inside. The only thing you'll ever get on a cover is a nice picture and on the inner side, a bunch of advertisements. Most people don't read those. At least I don't think so. But my Superman number two with a cover will cost about three to four thousand dollars. Without a cover, cost me around three hundred and fifty dollars. My Fantastic Four issue number one with a cover will cost you around, again, one fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. I spent four hundred. My Amazing Spider-Man number one with a cover will cost you around two grand. I spent around two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. Who's the smarter investor? So there are plenty of people who will have the elitist point of view, who will have many followers. Just because you have many people following you does not mean your message is positive or beneficial. Sometimes people follow people just for the fact that other people are doing it and they may not be emotionally stable at that time enough to be able to think outside the box 
or think on their own. And that's why to this day I have some people, I mean, just watch the thumbs down in this video. Watch how few people will have listened to this far. And if you're one of the people that's listened to this far, say the number 30, because we're about to hit the 30-minute mark. Just write 30 in the comments section. How many people have actually said the code word that I've done on videos? Not because they watch the whole video, but they actually go to the comment section, see a bunch of people writing it, and they say, oh, I want to pretend I watched it too, and I'm going to type that number or that code message. You're not helping yourself. So I don't get everything right, and I'm okay with that. Know thyself. It's okay to make faults. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be wrong. If you just deny it or hide it, you're just being sneaky. You're being dishonest. The only person you're really hurting is yourself because no one ever gets to learn the true you. Just the facade that you put out there. I, I, My days of judging other people are, if not completely gone, on their way of being phased out. I want to help those who are willing to help themselves. And that's being open. That's being honest. That's being patient. That's seeing both sides of a coin because if you only look at one side of a coin there are going to be many people that'll sell you a bunch of nice looking one-sided fake coins do your own research value people's opinions but see them just as that an opinion anybody that tells you that you're doing something wrong or doing it their way is the only way is somebody that doesn't understand how life works I mean just think of a government that tells you you have to think this way do you think that's more a democratic government or more of a dictatorship if somebody is telling you you're doing it wrong you have to do it my way join my crowd just imagine that from a government point of view you can have people share their opinions share their ideas they may be different from yours I mean, I, I made a video, which is what with the, was the beginning of some of the hatred that came my way, talking against Mylars. Now, Mylars are better than regular bags and boards. I'm not going to sit here and deny it. But if you put your comics in a Mylar, you're going to spend three to four times the amount of money. And if you don't store them properly, you will have a very expensive protector that destroys your comic just a tiny bit slower. Because last time I checked, my laws are not airproof, which means bacteria and things that love to devour paper over time will do the same in a mylar than it will in a regular bag and board. Now, of course, mylar is going to last a thousand years. Does that mean the comic inside is going to last just as long as the mylar? Absolutely not. And if you believe that, Congratulations. The companies that sell you those things have put enough false information out there that you actually believe it. There's an old saying that says, tell a lie long enough it becomes the truth. Now, does that mean you shouldn't be putting your books in Mylar? Well, that's for you to decide. But if you store them improperly, then it doesn't matter what you put them in. And that's the focus. Maybe the first time around, I didn't say it in the best way. But there were plenty of people that have to have everything in Mylars that utterly humiliated me and attacked me for having my right to an opinion instead of saying, well, I don't agree with you, but you have the right. I had many people point their fingers and say, oh, look at this idiot who's wrong. That's not the best way to have a dialogue and a conversation. That's an elitist point of view. Now, back then, I didn't know any better, and I had to try and defend myself. That was silly on my behalf. But again, when you learn from your mistakes and you can improve them, then were they really bad? Because if you can grow from something and become stronger or better or smarter from some kind of event that may have caused you pain or loss or tragedy or fear or doubt, then it's not really bad if it improved you because then it was what's called a necessary evil. So when it comes to true investing, as you can see, it can become political, it can become economical, of course, but also psychological. The reason the wealthy stay wealthy is they know how to manipulate people based on greed, based on fear, based on the herd mentality. You want to get somebody to start buying a product, put out 
a message of how cool that product is. Get a bunch of people to start praising it. Very important people. Well, in the eyes of the masses, like you know, sports stars and movie stars and singers. Why do you think they get people like Beyonce to promote Pepsi? Do you really think she's sitting there drinking Pepsi for the benefits, the wonderful benefits of a, of a soda? Or do you think it's because they got paid enough money to say whatever they wanted them to say, knowing that other people who are fans of her music, or her in general, will want to be like them? All you have to do is look back in the 90s when Madonna, when Madonna was popular. All of a sudden, every girl on the planet dressed like Desperately Seeking Susan. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. That was Madonna's first movie. And every girl, and trust me, I grew up in that era, every girl wanted to all of a sudden dress like Madonna. You don't think companies use that to their advantage to make lots and lots of money? Why do you think... Marvel and DC reboot now almost every six months because they know people are going to buy it because you've been trained to think and uh, I'm partially guilty but if you see most of my number one issues that I show 90% of them are independent books I only bought one Marvel book that was number one this this coming this past week because I see their game the idea is to be smarter. So yeah, I bought two of the Amazing Spider-Man number one. And like I said, if you watched the video the other day, the only reason I bought it is because my comic shop thought I wanted it and put it on my pull list. And they have to order a certain amount of books. So if I, if they put something in my pull list and I put it back on the shelf, now they're stuck with you know extra inventory. I didn't want to do that to them because it's the only co comic shop around where I live for 30 miles. And they've been pretty good to me. So I bought them. But I, make no mistake, that's not going to be a $10,000 book, ever. But I only spent cover price, so I didn't invest a lot in it. I mean, look at, for example, the book that I mentioned just yesterday. The Die, 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 which came out where nobody pretty much knew about it. They didn't advertise it. It just came out, which I think is a really good marketing ploy, because look how many people talked about it. I, when I first learned about it, I went on eBay because my comic store said you can only buy one of them. It was a limit of one per store. So I immediately went on eBay and bought 10 of them for, I think, a total with shipping and handling of $58. So that's $5.88. Within three hours, those same sellers were selling them now 10 for 99 So the book wasn't even 24 hours old, and people were selling them for twice what they were worth on the shelf and I guarantee you there were people that bought them now me buying them the one at, at cover price and paying the smallest amount possible online because remember they have to charge you shipping and handling so I factor in the shipping and handling so it came out to fifty eight dollars for ten that's five dollars and eighty cents a piece it was a three ninety nine book so round it out to four dollars. Well, if you don't round it out, I spent a dollar eighty one extra. That's not a lot to invest. Some people are paying twice that amount, and I could just imagine what it is now. And if that book ends up popular, more and more people are gonna get on the, the train and spend a heck of a lot of money. Now some people just may not have known about it or didn't have the money. That's different. But climb on board at the right time. But do it if you feel comfortable. And that's why most of my collections, as you can see, I, I have no problem collecting some new books. Because like I tell people, at one point, every book was a modern book. In 1939, Action Comics number 1 was a modern book. Look where it's valued now. Do you think somebody in 1939 and 1940 and 1950 and 1960 was going to spend a million dollars on that book? 1970? Look how many decades it took for that book to gain that much popularity and financial ability. It takes time. How many people are willing to spend decades of waiting? I did. The people who collected in the 90s, the Amazing Spider-Man 300s, still waiting on X-Men number one, the 90s version. Probably be waiting another hundred years. I'll be dead before that book has any value. I mean, look at Spawn. How many people could have bought Spawn 
five years ago for five bucks? What are they spending on it now? And do you know the print run of that book? There are millions. You know, at the average print run now, if you could sell 200,000 copies of a book now, you're up there. If you sold 200,000 books in the 90s, you were an utter failure because books like X-Men had a print run of around 8 million. The average print run for a Marvel book was between 2 and 5 million. Anything less than that, you were a failure. Now the average print run is around two to 300, maybe 500,000. You sell 500,000 copies, they do backflips. But look how many people want Spawn number one now because the movie was coming out. I bought Spawn number one. I have about four or five copies that I bought the day they came out at $1.95. So even if I turned around and sold them for $5, I technically made a profit. I still own all four or five copies in their original bags and boards that I bought back in the 90s. Because I store things properly, they never needed to be changed. There's no yellowing of the books. So, since this is a 41-minute video, if you watched this far, write down the number 4114. Let me know in the comments section. Like I said, very few of you will listen to this whole thing because I tend to ramble, and that's okay. But those of you who have an open mind, who do not have to be stuck with brand loyalty, which is just a trap to get your money to go to one brand and one company, those who value opinions but don't listen to somebody telling you how to invest your money or your time, you have something you can learn from this. If you want to join those people that are going to sit there, point fingers, and attack like my very few trolls, that's fine. Those are the people you want to listen to? There's a reason why there's an old saying that says, A fool and their money are soon parted. And I guarantee you, it was a very wealthy person that came up with that quote. Don't be taken advantage of. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be over-emotional if your book or your investment in whatever you invest in doesn't pan out. That's why they talk about when you are in investments, you diverse. My money goes towards gold and silver coins and bars. My money has gone towards collectibles like action figures and baseball cards, comic books, other investments, antiques. It's spread out. It's not just for one particular thing. Because if you put, like they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because if that basket gets destroyed, now everything that was in that basket is gone. So yeah, it might be great to put all your money into one thing. But now you're hoping that one thing stays profitable and continues to be profitable. Because if you put all your money in one thing and all of a sudden that book or that coin or that investment goes down, you have nothing else to save you. So for those of you who have an open mind and see things for what they really are, maybe you might think of certain individuals in different ways. I'm not telling you to hate anybody. There are people I don't agree with. I don't like the way they treat me. But I, I wouldn't wish them bad at all because why would I want to wish a fellow human being who collects comics different than me bad feelings? Even if they betrayed or backstabbed or continue to pretend to be my friend and thumb down my videos. That's just silly. I'm a grown adult. and Some of these other people should be that way as well. So before this gets into some emotional rant or anything like that, I want to take this time to thank those of you who were kind enough to watch this entire video. Make sure your presence is known in the comments section. Let me know you watched the whole video. Let me know if any part of it helped. Let me know if it helped you change your thought process or it helped you to invest smarter. Buy low, sell high, which means you're going to buy books that no one else wants who maybe thinks you're crazy. But if they don't work out, you didn't spend an arm and a leg for them. If you bought a book in a dollar store for a dollar and it doesn't work out, 
You're not going to jump off a bridge saying, oh, I lost that dollar. But if you spent $10,000 on an investment and all of a sudden that book is worth $5,000 or that Bitcoin or that gold bar or that stock, whatever, you're going to be having a very miserable day. But just remember, what goes down can also go back up. Thanks for listening. I hope my words help you in any way, even if it's 1% of all this nonsense that I talk about. Because, you know, it is about comic books overall. Just have fun. Be happy. Get people's advice. Don't listen to anyone that tells you how to be. Nobody knows you better than you. So build up your own self-worth. Don't let others influence you unless you think you can get good information. And stay away from the, this, the dishonest ones. You may make a lot of money from people that are dishonest. But if that's the way you want to leave your legacy, by being sneaky and being dishonest, you know, that's your choice. Don't live that life if you want a, success, a truly successful life. Most people will, value, will say success is how many dollars you have in your wallet. To me, success is how many friends or how many people will listen to you and care about you. How many good deeds have you done? Not how much greenbacks you can put in your bank account. Anybody can do that. Why do you think drug dealers and people who murder people for a living and people who take advantage of others are very wealthy? It doesn't take a kind heart to get money. A lot of people got their money by hurting others or deceiving others. That's not, that's not a legacy, or at least a legacy I would want. If you want it, that's your path to, to cross. So thanks for listening. I hope this video helped. And uh, don't forget, it's not you, it's not I. It's we love always of having comics. You have a wonderful day.